Hello, welcome everybody. Hope you all are fantastic. It is 2 p.m. Central Time here in Austin, and I am checking to make sure we are streaming on YouTube, on LinkedIn, and on my Facebook page. And it looks like we are good to go. Hello, welcome. Listen, we we come on at least once a week. We try. We as an I, I try to come here once a week. I try to be with you once a week and bring you a topic that's important to you, bring you ideas, insights, innovative ideas to bring to your organizations to help you in your life and your leadership practice. That's the intent of what I do every single week. I am purposeful, intentional in the topics I choose. And today is a very important topic. We're talking about time. Time. What does time mean to you? How are you utilizing time? How are you maximizing time? What is the definition that you have of time? And so we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But first, I want to introduce myself because I have been neglecting to do that. If you go back to the past live streams, I uh, forget to say hi and introduce to you who I am. So I'm going to take a moment to do that. Uh, My name is Dr. Denise Simpson. I am a life and leadership coach uh, for women leaders. I am also an executive coach to those in the executive and C-suite. I am the founder of Masters of Leadership Institute. It is an institute for women leaders. We provide them with leadership training, development, and coaching. It is an exceptional institute. I've given my clients in the institute everything I've got. All of my resources are poured back into the institute for her. And so I'm having a great time in there. I know she is too. So today we're going to talk about time. How are you under utilizing time? How are you maximizing time? So I want for you to use the comment section, wherever you're watching this, whatever platform you're on, I want for you to say hello. First of all, tell me um, where you're watching from. Tell me um, maybe even if you can, uh, what your definition of time is and whether you're utilizing it, underutilizing it, maximizing it, all the things about time. So we're going to get some comments on the screen or I'll just be able to read them here on my my dashboard. So again, we are streaming into YouTube, into LinkedIn and on my Facebook page. You can reach me at all the handles at Dr. Denise Simpson. So let's get into this conversation of time and why this is so important for us to talk about. So we're going into quarter two. We're wrapping up quarter one, that's January through March. And so this is the time, this is the week, the last week of quarter one, where I start intentionally looking at the next quarter. Listen, when I'm in a quarter, I'm fully focused. I'm fully focused on my goals, on my objectives, on my desires, on all the things that I want to accomplish, either in my personal life or in my business practice. And so this is the week. This is the week where I start getting my, I dig out my planner. Listen, I have a a, a planner that I designed for my clients and for myself. It's a quarterly planner. It's for leaders. It is the most beautiful thing ever that I've created for my clients. I'm so excited. Um, I actually created it for my brain first, and then I shared it with my clients and they're enjoying it too. So this is the time where we start preparing for quarter two. And we start looking at the concept of time, the construct of time, how we define time for ourselves, how we use time. And so it's important that we talk about what time means to you before we start planning quarter two, before we start planning these big goals and objectives in our leadership practice or in our personal lives. And so this is important because as I coach my high performing clients, they're moving quickly. They're leveraging time. They're maximizing time in what's important to them, right? Because all you have to do is show me your calendar, show me your planner, and I know what you value. I know what is most important to you because it's it's planned for. It's on a calendar. It's on your planner. And so time is is very important to us leaders, especially for those of us who are parents, for those of us who are leading communities, we're leading our organizations. We plan goals and objectives around time. And so time, physicists define time as the progression of events from the past 
to the present and into the future. And how do we measure time? We measure time through chronological order of events. We measure time through, through a clock, through a planner, calendar. We have agreed as a, as a society that time is what we use. And it's a, it's a social construct time. And we use time to keep society organized and efficient. So time is important to us in our economy, in our government, in our organizations, in our families. Time is what we need to learn how to leverage. And a lot of us aren't leveraging or maximizing time. We're actually underutilizing this concept of time, right? But we have these practical measurements. We have practical measurements, again, through you know, uh, through your calendar, through your, through your chronological events, through birthdays, we're always measuring time. So it's an important subject, especially for those of us who are leaders, who identify as leaders. And so it's important that we look at time because time does run our lives and we need to understand what time is. Sometimes we need to deconstruct the concept so that we can understand better what this tool is and how we can use it to our advantage. Sometimes we need to redefine the definition of time for us because so many of us, time was used against us as children. I mean, so many of us learn this as children. I mean, think about it. When we were little ones, we had to wait for Christmas to come. We had to wait for summer to begin. We had to wait for our driver's permit. We had to wait for, for us to start dating. We had to wait. I mean, how many times did you ask your mom, can, when can I open my gifts? So when, 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 when it's, it's, it, I mean, you have the tree up. Why, why do I have to wait until the day of why, why can't we do this now? Well, it's not time yet. How many times did your parents tell you it's not time yet? I mean, I know I wanted to date as soon as I could. And my mom was like, no, it's not time yet. How about driving? I got my, my driver's permit at 15 because I was so excited. I wanted, I wanted to drive already. And she said to me, it's not time yet. There's laws in place. There are things in place. There's even you know family guidelines and principles and rules that we follow within our family unit. And these are these, this is run by time, you see. We have to follow the order of time. You're too young to date. You're too young to drive. You're too young to do anything yet. You're too young. Time. And so time sometimes was used against us. And so we build up this pressure around time because we also saw our parents suffering because of time. You know, a lot of them said, we're running out of time. We need to have that next baby. Let's go. We're running out of time. We need to get married. We're running out of time. We need to go buy that house. We're running out of time. I'm getting too old. I need, I'm going to retire soon. We're running out of time. I mean, this is, this is what I heard in my home growing up. Time was always against us. There wasn't enough money to be made in this two week period. So when we got our pay, when my parents got their paycheck, they're like, well, it's a two week time period. We can't get any more money from these two weeks. This is all we have. So time runs our lives and it depends on how we were raised that determines how we use time today as adults. And so now you're leading, now you're leading your family. Now you're leading your community. Now you're leading your organization and time is not on your side. At least that's what you think, because that's how you were raised to believe. This is what we learned from our authority leader figures when we were little girls. This is what was taught to us by society. I mean, you had to get married and quickly have a child because society said you're running out of time. I know in my culture, as soon as I got married, when are we having the babies? You're running out of time. What do you mean? I just got married. You want me to have a family now? Because this is your time, this is your schedule, not mine. Hold on, society. Hold on, culture. Hold on, family. That's not my time schedule. It's not my timeline. So hang on a second. And so we use time against us. People use time against us. We use time against ourselves. I mean, so many of us are rushing to the altar. We're rushing to leadership. We're rushing to get formal educations because we feel time is against us. And so I want for us to take a moment today for us to just settle into the social construct of time. Sure, we talked to physicists, we talked to astrophysicists, they could tell you all about the relativity, relativity of time and all that. Okay, fine. 
but I am more interested in how we're using time, how we're using it as masterful leaders, how we're leveraging time so that we can fulfill our personal, professional goals and desires that we have for ourselves. Because so many of us are not putting our personal desires on the forefront of our priority list. We're actually putting it in the back seat. We're taking a back seat to our personal desires and our goals, and we're using time against us. So again, show me your calendar, show me your planner, and I will show you what's important to you because you will plan, you will, you value what you make time for. You value what you make time for. Listen, I value my health and wellness. I make time for that every single day. I do that through working out. I do that through endurance training, weight training. I do that through my supplement, my supplements that I take every day. I am very intentional because I value my health and wellness. So guess what? It's on my calendar. I value time with my family. Once a week, there's an outing. There's something that needs to be done together. Guess what? It's on my calendar. Every night there's dinner on the table. It's actually on my calendar to make dinner because I want to make sure everybody's fed. Everyone has a nutritious meal. That's valuable to me. I put everything on my planner because I want for my brain to see this is what's important to me. It's, it's what's important to my life. So I put all that first and foremost. Secondly, the business comes in. My clients come in. Then they populate the rest of my, my, my week. They populate everything else outside of my personal health and wellness. I plan for that. I value that first and foremost, because if I'm not healthy and I'm not planning for my health and wellness, then I can't give to my clients. I can't give to anybody else. So what's on that planner is what I most value. And so we talk a whole lot about this inside the Institute. We talk a whole lot about leveraging time, showing our brains what's important to us so that we create intentional, deliberate lives. And so whether you are a founder or business owner like me, this session is important. Whether you are in the C-suite or an executive leader, this is very important whether you are a, an aspiring leader, an emerging leader, a mid-career leader, this is important. It's important to every single person that calls themselves a leader because time runs our lives and our businesses and our families and our leadership practice. And so it's important that we take a moment to deconstruct this social construct for us to redefine what it means to us so that we can use it in a more powerful way so that we, we can really learn how to maximize our time. And then we want to leverage it. Those are three things that we are going to do today. We're going to talk a little bit about, and then we're also going to invite you into the Institute where we're going to do some bonus trainings this week because we are planning for quarter two. We've got big goals. We have lots of ambition. Listen, I, I don't what who we attract in the institute are disruptors. These are women leaders who are changing status quo, they're disrupting status quo and they are visionaries and they they use time. Time is what they use to leverage and maximize their powerful leadership abilities. That's what we do inside the institute. So there's going to be an invitation for you to join us this week, two bonus trainings that are happening this week for our clients in the institute. So as I said, we were in a hurry when we were children, right? We, we, they used time against us. You know, we were told by society that, uh, that, you know, time was, was, was something that, that needed to run our lives and that time was, was full of pressure and time was full of constraint and, and time was full of intensity and, and time can feel that way, especially when you have a lot of duties and obligations. You know, something that that they say is that time is the great equalizer. Everyone has the same amount of time. Now, of course, every human has has a very unique 
time span on this earth. <laughs> they have a, a, an expiration date on this earth. But what they say is that no matter your circumstances, no matter who you are, you have the same amount of time to accomplish a goal. Now, I don't necessarily agree with that. I understand the 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 higher order thinking of that, but when it comes down to individuals, we we can't just generalize that for everybody. Sure, we all have had the same amount of time to accomplish a goal, but we have unique circumstances that we each are dealing with. So let's say you have a mother, a single mother of two children. You know, she her time is very valuable and she uses her time when she's not at work, she is caring for those little ones. She is feeding them, clothing them, making sure they go to school. She is asking for help because she may not physically have the time to, to, to pick them up after school and, you know, help them with their homework after work. She may be having to stay in the office a little, a little longer than her counterpart who's already at home, who may not have children, who may not have any other duties or responsibilities. So the way she views time is very differently than maybe the next person in the other, in the other office. And so her time is, is, is unique to her. her. Her definition of time is unique to her. And so I don't want to compare apples to oranges. You know, circumstances are circumstances. They have their circumstances. You have yours. And so I want to talk to you about your specific circumstances and the duties, responsibilities that you have as a mother, as a leader, as, as, as someone who may be taking care of a, an elderly parent because you're in the sandwich generation. You may be someone who is not only working full time, but you may be starting a nonprofit. Maybe you're someone who serves on a board and running for office. Maybe you are a founder and, and, you know, you run a small business like I do, and you're also doing amazing things in the community. So you've got all these hats, you have all these responsibilities. And so how are you using your time? How are you maximizing it? How are you leveraging it for yourself? Never mind the next person. That's none of our business. And I say this because so many of us, when we when we start looking at this the the scarcity of time in our lives, we start comparing ourselves to others. And some of us are doing that with our employees. Some of us will say, "What well, you know? He's single. He doesn't have children, and she's a single mom, and she's over here, you know, working an extra hour or two. You know, I, who do I give more responsibility to? Who do I give the raise to?" Who do I, you know, favor because of time? So be careful, leader, because that should not be part of your equation. That should not be part of your leadership. Careful with your definition of leadership. Careful with how you view, excuse me, your definition of time, how you view time, right? And so let's separate our definition of time from what we think our employees' definition of time is. Let's not do that to our employees. So this is about you, leader. We're doing the internal work together today. So many of us are feeling overwhelmed with not having enough time. We don't have enough time to fulfill these projects. We don't have enough time to do something personal for us. I mean, I know a lot of leaders who are they put their organization first and foremost on their calendar. Obviously, they're 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 salaried individuals. They are responsible for problem solving and creating results in their organization. So there's a lot at stake, and so of course it's 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 important. It's a priority. But then they put their health and their well being on the back burner, or they don't even tend to it because they just don't have enough time. They don't have enough time to eat nutritious, healthy meals. They don't have enough time to hire a coach to help them with their mindset. They don't have enough time to hire a personal trainer or go to the gym. They don't have enough time for their intimacy, their, their relationships. And so they prioritize the organization before they prioritize their own health and well-being. And so we, we need to be careful we don't use time against us we don't sacrifice ourselves for the time that we have or don't have to give to ourselves. I want for you to think about this for yourself. What, what, how are you using time against yourself right now? Is there something that you want to create, something that you want to fulfill that because of your view on time is not allowing you to do that? Because it's a perspective, my friend. 
And I can help you shift that perspective for yourself. It's really about shifting it. It's about tweaking it. It's about modifying it. It's about truly understanding the time that you do have on your side. And so what does that look like for you? Some people are feeling very frustrated with time. Time's going too fast. I'm getting too old. My parents are aging. I have to move quickly on a nursing home. I have to move quickly on their medical care. I'm frustrated. There's not enough time to do all of this. There's not enough time to organize these plans. There's not enough time. I'm running out of it. I mean, think of all the adages we hear about time. Time is money. Don't waste your time. You're running out of time, right? Use your time effectively. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time on that person. Don't waste your time with that dilemma. So we use time because time obviously runs our lives. But how about we not be at the effect of time? How about we be at the cause of time? How about we influence our actions and behaviors and our mindset around time? How about we change the energy of time? I was reading an article today on time and, and it was a Harvard Business Review article. And, you know, it, it was... Let's not manage time. Let's manage our energy instead. Well, we do have timelines. We do have projects that we have to fill, fulfill in our organizations. We, you know, tax season is here. Taxes are due soon. Time is up. And so we, we have to use time. Time is, we can't escape time. We're aging every single day. We're, it's time. Time is moving. Time is moving quickly. For some, and for some, it's moving very slowly. Ask a child and time is very slow. Ask someone who is um, in critical care. And for them, time is going very quickly. And so I, I mention this because so many of us have different feelings about time. Like I said, some of us are overwhelmed. Some of us are frustrated with time. Some of us are apathetic about time. It's like, well, why bother fulfilling any goal? Why bother pursuing these personal desires? Why bother? Time is not on my side, whatever. That's apathy. That's what apathy looks like. And so what are your feelings about time, around time, the time that you have left on this earth, the time that you have left to accomplish a goal, to start a goal, to start a new hobby, to end a bad habit? What are your feelings about time? For me, I feel abundantly, abundance of time. I feel like there's plenty of it. I have reprogrammed the way I look at time. You know, I was, I, I rushed through, through college, rushed through my career. I've been, I was rushing through research, rush, rushing through starting a business. And now I'm finally at a point in my life where time is on my side and I feel like I'm leveraging it like a masterful leader. I'm using it to, to, to create some incredible goals in my business and in my personal life. I'm leveraging time. I'm maximizing it. So what is your perspective on time? You know, a lot of, of my clients say, I don't, you know, I don't have enough time to pursue a, a personal weight loss goal. And I always bring up the question, well, what's, what's it costing you to not fulfill this? What's it costing you to not make time for your health and wellness? Like, let's look at the, let's look at the evidence. Let's look at the numbers. Let's look at what's happening in your body. Let's look at what could happen in the future. Let's look at what it's costing you today and what it can cost you tomorrow. And that usually changes their perspective on their personal goals and desires. And so ask yourself, what am I putting on hold right now? Because I don't know how to leverage time. What personal desire am I putting on hold? Am I denying myself? Because I don't know how to maximize this tool. Time's running my life instead of me running this resource, me maximizing this resource. What is it costing me to not pursue my goals? What is it costing me to not pursue these dreams? And more importantly, who are you not becoming? Because you're using time against you, or at least your concept or perception of time against you. Who are you not becoming because you don't have a, a great understanding on the resource of time? So those are some questions I want for you to ask yourself. 
And so let's talk about deconstructing time. Let's de deconstruct what this, this, this um, social construct is. Two things that I like to say here is that time is neutral. Time is neutral. It's not, it's neither good or bad. It's not until you make it mean something about how it's impacting your life. That's when you deem it good or bad. But time is neutral. That's important to understand. It's not until you think a thought about it. It's not until you assign a meaning to the impact. And usually it's a negative impact. That's when you start making time work against you. So careful with your thoughts, careful with your perspective on time. And this is why it's important to deconstruct this. So number one, time is neutral. It's neither good or bad. It's a construct. How are you using it? And how are you assigning a meaning to it? When things don't go as planned, when you're putting your personal desires on the back burner. And number two, it's the great neutralizer. Sure, everyone has the same resource of time, but your circumstances are different than mine. My circumstances are different than his. And so it's not about how each of us are, how, how he's using his time or how she's using her time. No, it's about how we're using our time and making sure that, that that's removed from your leadership practice. I don't want for you, like I said earlier, to use that against your employees because one may have a label of a mother, a label of a single mother, a label of a breadwinner, a label of a leader, a label of whatever versus someone who has a label who's single, a label who doesn't have children, a label who, you know, uh, who, who, who parties, uh, goes to happy hour every night. Never mind what your employees are doing with their time. I want for you to focus on your time and how you are defining the meaning of time. So the great neutralizer, it's the one variable that is unique to each human. How much time you have left on this earth is very interesting, right? Because even that thought, I don't have much time on this earth. I got to move quickly. Again, we're using time against us. So be careful with your thoughts around time. So those are two things that I like to talk about when we really get, we deconstruct this, this construct of, of time. It's that it's the great neutralizer and that it is neutral. Excuse me, great equalizer and that it is neutral. And so really important to understand that when we are going to redefine what time means to us, knowing that it's the great equalizer and knowing that it is a neutralizer, how do you want to redefine it for yourself so that we don't use time against us? So what do you want to make it mean? Do you want to make it mean like you have plenty of time? Do you want to make it mean like, you know, time is valuable to you? Do you want to make it mean that it's now time to, to, to look at your personal goals and desires differently? What do you want to make time mean to you? You know, some people say money is time. And I, I have that belief too. I actually have that belief. I, I look at my calendar and I look at all the ways I'm providing value. I'm looking at all the ways that value is being returned to me. I'm looking at how I run my business through the lens of, of, of a masterful leader who, who leverages time. Um, you know, time is, is something that I, I maximize in my business because I, you know, there's so many hats that I wear. And so in my business, I feel like time is money. And I, I make sure that in my planner, I have some, I have, you know, I'm utilizing that and I'm planning what's important on my planner every single week. And so what is, what does this mean to you? How do you want to redefine time? And so let me know in the comments below. So let's redefine it for you. Jot down some ideas. What do you want? What, what do you want it to mean? What do you want to make it mean moving forward? Knowing that, you know, we have been embedded with certain principles and ideologies around time, knowing that what we learned as, you know, what we're doing as adults is, is what we learned as children. And now we get to redefine it for ourselves moving forward. So what, what does that look like for you? And once you redefine it, then we can move on to leveraging it. So now we have a new definition because we have a new understanding, right? We deconstructed that. We then redefined it. So now we want to leverage it because now we better understand it. And now we have a new definition. So how do you leverage it? Now we get to leverage it with, with our planners, with our calendars, 
We get to look at what's important, what's not important. Something I'm going to do on Sunday, I believe that's April 2nd, we are going to work on a Sunday strategy session in the Institute. We are going to use our quarterly planners again that I designed for myself and my clients. This is the leader quarterly planner. It's about 278 pages. It's a beautiful planner. Here we have, it's a 90 day planner. So we plan things in quarter quarter goals. Um, in the Institute, we focus on 90 day goals at a time. Listen, we're, we're visionaries. We've got big ideas, but we take our ideas and we put them into 90 day goals. And so Sunday, this Sunday, April 2nd, that's coming up, we're going to do a Sunday planning session so that we can plan for the week so that we can better understand how we're using our time on a weekly basis. I'm going to show you exactly what I do, how I leverage it like a masterful leader how I get so much done in my work week. And there's plenty of time for fun and relaxation and the spiritual work that I do and the self-care work that I do. You're going to see what I do in my personal and my business practice so that you can maybe take some ideas. Maybe you can share some of your ideas with us. And so that's Sunday. Now, before Sunday, however, we're doing a quarter two session. Q2 is up starts April 1. We have a three-month, 90-day period where we're going to take some inspired, massive action. We're going to work on our mindset as we take action. And that's happening on Friday. That's uh, is that March 31st. Yes. Don't have my, <laughs> don't have my calendar in front of me. Uh, March 31, we're going to work on quarter two goals. Because listen, disruptors, we have to have a plan of action. Disruptors are, we've got nebulous abstract ideas in our brains. And, and this quarterly planner allows us to put those ideas in writing. We, we plan out our strategy. We plan out tactics and execution. And we reevaluate every time we take an action and it doesn't go in our favor. We're always reevaluating and trying again. That's what an ID day goal and the planner that we use is designed to help you um, meet your personal and your professional goals. That's what we're doing this week. And so let me invite you into, into the Institute. I want to invite you into the Institute because this is where we do the best work. This is where we create masterful leaders. This is where we, we, it's not just theoretical, it's application based. We're pragmatic. We're practical in the Institute. So you're not just going to listen to some boring lectures on, on research-based evidence-based studies. No, we're going to put this into action. That's what we get to do as masterful leaders. And that's what the, the Institute was designed to do is to take all that rich empirical research and we make it practical for us so that we can put it into our daily practice as leaders. What's the point of a good theory if you can't put this into practice? And so in the Institute, we do both. We do theoretical work plus application work. So this is the week where we focus on Q2. So time is very important to us in the in the Institute. Time is what we do. We leverage and we maximize it like masterful leaders that we are. I want to invite you to do that. And I'm going to put on my screen here um, the website that you want to go to so that you can enroll ASAP. You're going to want to get in there definitely before Friday. We're going to, we have the carts open right now so that you can go in and enroll. We'll close the enrollment Friday morning. So um, we're done with accepting anyone into the Institute until we reopen again to the public. So right now it's just a short time frame where we're inviting our um, incredible women leaders out there who are ready to maximize and leverage their time. These are women who um, want to get as much leadership training and development and coaching from masterful people in this program. We're excited to serve you. We're excited to talk about time this week. Next month's uh, masterclass and calendar will be published by the end of the week. So if you become a client of ours, uh, you will have access to past recordings, present recordings, and future recordings as long as you are active in our um, in our client base. So you want to go to drdenisesimpson.com forward slash M O L that stands for masters of leadership. So masters of leadership Institute, but you're going to, um, type in drdenisesimpson.com forward slash M O L. So listen, my friends, as I wrap up here, I just, I want you to think about what time means to you today. What is it costing you? 
because you're using time against yourself because of your definition of time is not serving you. You're not fulfilling your goals. You're not fulfilling your personal desires. You're putting them on the back burner because you don't know how to leverage time because you've been given the wrong definition of time because this definition or the meaning you have around time is not serving you today. It's not going to serve you tomorrow either. So if you think that's the case, it's not. It hasn't served you to it, yesterday, today, or in the future. And so I invite you into the Institute to learn how to leverage it and use it like a masterful leader that you are. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing you inside the Institute. Again, go to drdenisensen.com forward slash M-O-L. All right. I'm looking forward to reading your comments and I'm looking forward to serving you inside the Institute. Take good care. Have a wonderful afternoon.